Hello friends and welcome back to another video. Stroll back with you and today is something that has been highly requested. We're gonna look at some tips and tricks and how to to shoot manual photos and videos on the LG V20. And this will actually be applicable to other phones that have manual features on them and you can even use these with your DSLRs and other things that are gonna have manual features. So the first half of this video is going to be explaining a few things that you need to know for manual video and photos like aperture, ISO, shutter speed, white balance, and manual focus. Then the second half we'll be getting into some real life examples. I'm gonna be going outside, gonna be showing you how to do each of these things. Let's jump into it. One of the first things that is good to know is aperture. And this really is just how much light your lens is letting in to your sensor of your device. So with the LG V20, the main shooter has a f1.8 and the wide angle lens is f2.4. And you might think that the 2.4 is better, but with uh, aperture, actually the smaller f-stop, the smaller f-number is going to let in more light. So just think of it as uh, the f1.8 would have like a, a picture of like this that is letting in that much light and the 2.4 might be a little bit smaller so more, a little bit less light is getting in there. And that's all it is. So with the LG V20 it's actually fixed. You're not able to change the aperture um, higher or lower. So it's always going to be 1.8 for the main shooter. Aperture can really change the depth of field. You can get a shallower depth of field with a lower aperture such as a 1.8 lens that really you'll be able to see the depth and it'll be a shallow depth of field everything else will kind of be out of focus the next thing to look at is shutter speed and this is pretty cool with shutter speed you can adjust it on the bottom right here under the s and basically what shutter speed is is how fast it's going to take the picture the shutter of the picture so uh, when it's when it's at this lower speed down here that's going to shoot really really fast pictures so if you want to be able to get like a car zooming past you or catch your kid really fast that's that but if you looked it made the screen entirely black that's because at these speeds uh, the lower the shutter speed like that uh, the meaning the faster it takes the picture is it doesn't let in as much light so as you see as you make the shutter speed um, higher here which makes it take the picture slower it's gonna let in so much more light. So look, it's really blown out here and it's going to really let a lot of light in. What this allows you to do then is to be able to put down your ISO lower so that you can get cleaner and better pictures there. So I really love being able to do the shutter speed. So if you do it on down here, that means you have to hold the phone still for two seconds. So this is a great if you want to get some motion blur in things, like the 15 seconds here, that can get motion blur in cars, like flying by at night. You can see the lights as the flyby. You might have seen that in movies and effects like that. Even higher than up to like 30 can get a light effect that you can draw with lights. So it's really fun to be able to play around with this and really get the adjustments that you need to get it better. Shutter speed really works hand in hand with your ISO so that if you're able to bump up your shutter speed a little higher so that you can hold it still and make it longer, so put it down to like uh, 0.8 seconds, then that means you can really put your ISO down, really help reduce some of that noise in your pictures or video. So one of the things you really need to look and take into effect is ISO. ISO is pretty simple. All ISO is is that it is showing how sensitive your camera is to letting in light. So if you bump up the ISO to really, really high, say 3200, the highest that the LG V20 can do, that's gonna let a lot in, as you can see it blew out this image here. Um, but if you then put it down uh, lower, it's going to get darker. So in this room, we have a good light on, and I'm, allowed, I'm able to put this down to a 50 ISO. And so that's letting in the least amount of light that this sensor needs to make a good picture, uh, and you're able to get some good quality there. So I can take that picture and it'd be a solid one. So I had this on a high shutter speed, like a 0.8 second, so I had to hold it still for that time. But you'd still be good lower here. So when I got down to 1 8th of a second, I'm gonna need to bump that ISO back up to like 200 to be able to get a photo that's gonna work in this room. So that was able to take a quicker shutter speed 
but I had to bump up the ISO a little bit. So when you bump up the ISO, you're naturally going to get a little bit of noise in the picture. That's just a little bit of pixelation in your picture or video. So you gotta take in mind that when you adjust the ISO, you're gonna have to adjust the shutter speed back and forth, so and so. The higher the ISO, the more potential for noise in your picture. Now, if you have a great lit room, if you have lots of good lighting coming in from daylight or some studio lights set up, then you can keep your ISO really low and get some great images. But if you don't, you're gonna have to bump that up and your image quality could suffer. The lower your ISO is actually a more accurate representation of the light that is coming into the room. The higher it is, it kind of blows out the image a little bit with the light. So in some images with really high ISO, you might notice some light bleed that goes off into the picture. It kind of looks like it's emanating from the object instead of an actual solid light throughout. So the next thing that we're gonna look at on the LG V20 and your manual controls is just uh, your white balance. So you can have it on auto and it'll just adjust to whatever it thinks is best for the room, but you can actually change it. So you can make it more warm, see how it's beginning a little more yellow, more tungsten-like, um, or you can take it down and get it a cooler effect. I kind of like the more cool blues. 5,000 Kelvin to 6,500 is kind of like your daylight standard. That's what it would be at a daylight with uh, fairly clear skies. But if you move it up and down, you can really adjust to kind of get it what you would like it to look like better for the image. So uh, it's kind of cool. It's really easy on here. It shows it getting more red as you go higher. And then as you pull it down a little bit, it gets more blue. So with the focus, autofocus, you can just hit that and be able to pull up and down. So this shows more of the landscape, which is farther away, or the more the portrait, which is closer up. So if you want to focus on things closer to you, you pull it down towards this way. If you want to pull it up, you push it up that way. You can also put it auto. I've already showed you the focus peaking, which is really great in order to help outline what is in focus in your image. That really helps make sure and ensure you're getting the shot in focus. It's tough when you think you nailed the shot and it was really just a slightly bit off and it will bother me when I go back to edit things. All right, friends, we're out here with the LG V20 with some manual photo and videos. You can see it's pretty cold, got the icy pond back there. We're gonna look at some of the manual controls on this device and try to help you learn how to use some of them. Let's go take a look. So I wanted to give you an idea of some video here. And so what we're gonna do here, so I'm gonna pull this down a little bit and I'm going to do a little bit of audio video uh, in auto mode and you get to see what I'm doing here just kind of moving around um, so I have this at 4k 24 frames a second at the highest bit rate and so this is at auto and this is without steady record on so here's uh, what you guys are seeing see it, it's adjusting pretty well to the light the Sun's over there it's very overcast right now um, it's barely peeking through the clouds adjusting adjusting so this is auto mode the LG V20 at 4K 24 frames per second, obviously handheld with a grip. So let's jump over to uh, manual video and see what we can do differently here. So uh, manual mode here. Now let's jump in. So here are you guys again, and it adjusts here to the light and we can change the rolling shutter. So you can see that there. I can change manual focus here and get uh, more of the background in focus around it, or I can just come in on you guys itself. I love that about this. So put that back on auto so you get a little better here. And see that skyline, we wanna say, I wanna make that a little warmer. See as it pulls that warmth in, that brighter light, and then you go back down, make it a little cooler. That blue come in through really good. Uh, you go through here, you can see your sound wave there, kind of what it looks like in the frame. Um, just about anything you want to do, if I want to bump up the ISO, it's not bright enough. Obviously it is bright enough, but maybe 100, get a little uh, more light built into that. So it, you get a lot more control with this, and it's going to be a lot better results in the long run if you're going to be able to work with it and you can see a difference. So something that's great that I'm able to do right now, I'm outside, it's really windy, and if you can hear it, sorry, but I can go into the hi-fi settings here and put on this wind noise filter, and that is a lifesaver. It's gonna cut down on a lot of the noise that is input in the system here, 
and then I can go uh, and put a limiter on here. So I put it on negative three decibels. That way it's going to make sure I'm not peaking too high on my audio. So that's a really great way to make sure that you're gonna get clean audio that's not cutting out on you. Um, so this is something that's great for this. And then I've talked about this before, but the directivity of the microphone. So you can change it so that if someone's behind the camera and you're filming them, it's gonna get the best sound for that. Or you can change it to the front, like if you're talking in kind of vlog style to the front of the screen and you wanna hear your own voice, that's the way you're gonna to wanna to do it. Or you can just kinda of leave it on the default in the middle here, and that way, uh, you kind of get the both of best sides if you have someone you're talking to and you're trying to hear your own voice. That's a great way to do it. All right, guys, so we are out here. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit about the auto mode versus the manual mode. So here you can see uh, we're just going to take a quick picture here with the auto mode. And simple as that, take a picture. Let's go to manual mode. And you can do a couple different things here now. So this is where some of these uh, things get really uh, awesome. So. You can set it to just be auto and it just adjusts as you're moving. Um, or you can lock it like this. So then if I wanted to change the shutter speed, say, okay, the shutter speed's at 1 364, so made for motion and things like that. But I can uh, change this down and get it a little slower to let in more light. Now we don't really need that here because it's overcast, the light's behind us, so we're okay. So we can actually put that back up a little bit because it's going to blow it out a bit. Then you can go over and you can do either an auto white balance or change what you'd like here. So the auto actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna um, make it a little cooler and uh, snap a photo here. So then you can look kind of what the differences here are. And um, the auto here is pretty saturated. It made it real oversaturated. If you like that, that might be good. But uh, this image here is actually a lot truer to color uh, with uh, the sensor is going to be better on that. So kind of adds up where you want to be. But with that, I really like that options and versatility. So you can change the focus here. And focus peaking is where it really is awesome. So this is great. So it's going to highlight everything that is in focus. So right now it's an auto. Um, but I can take it off auto. And look at that. So I can pull that. And that's real out of focus. And then I can pull it in and look at that. Everything's in focus. If I want to just get the background there, I can pull just on this tree. So that's a really great focus uh, feature there. Um, and then you have your white balance. And that you can really, watch this, I can, so I can really warm it up here if I wanted a more warm look. But I, I normally err on the cooler side, so I'll bring it down to closer to its, its normal daylight look there. So friends, this has been a look at the LG V20 and some of its manual photo and video uh, recordings, a way to a little better master some of these. And maybe you learned something today about aperture or about manual focus or white balance, ISO or shutter speed. Hopefully that was uh, helpful to you. If you have any more questions about specifically some of the manual functions on this phone or any of the other phones, I'd love to answer some of those down in the comments below. I also have a little guide to some of the basics of manual uh, features on cameras in the description below. You can check that out. But I've absolutely loved working with the LG V20 and some of its capabilities, especially with manual photo and videos if you have just a little bit of an idea how to make it look better. Hopefully you guys can get some awesome footage and great photos. Guys, this has been fun. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, give a big like down below. It really helps out the channel. But as always, you keep it classy. My fingers are falling off. Help. I gotta do it for the video, guys. I gotta do it for the video.